Oh, yeah, I was in the dark, too, but it looked a little too creepy, so I changed it. I put my light on. <laughs> uh, I'm going to keep it for the mood, you know? Yeah, it's a good mood. I have a little bit of a headache, so it was, like, nice, but it's I can't talk so much and be in the dark. Yeah, you have to be visible and presentable. I'm kind yes. of in the shadows. Which is being recorded. Yeah. But I'm also, like, I had my mic on, and I, like, looked at it. When I turned it on, I was like, this is creepy, and that's how it's the first thing I'm recorded saying on this meeting that's great <laughs> uh, that's the season halloween season right exactly oh uh, got ellen garrett four four nine six nine eight joelle is here mm -mm. let me get our Huh, that's weird. We'll wait till about 7.05. Hopefully everybody shows up. Um, our quorum is eight. We currently have one, two, three, four. I know Eamon and Danielle are gonna plan on being here. I haven't heard any from anybody that they're not gonna be here. Oh, fine. Hi, Doris. I'm going to put the link to our agenda in the chat if anybody doesn't have the agenda. I'm also sharing my screen with the agenda on it. Um, we have one public comment to read before we get started. We've got a couple more minutes. We'll wait for everybody to get here. Um, hi, Ellen. Um, Alona. Um, <clears throat> Have you heard from the city council or the mayor's office about your appointment yet? 
Uh, I heard from the mayor's office. Um, it's been a, almost two months ago, months and a half, and then the third round, uh, nothing yet. All right, I'll I'll reach out to the mayor's office today, and they'll they'll see where it is on the city council agenda, and then we'll get an update on that. Great, thank you for being on top of that. I wish I was more on top of it because it looks like it's taken a little bit longer than we expected. But I'll reach out to um, Court Klein and give me one second. Hopefully, more people will uh, jump on. Okay, I had to do some admin work. Sorry, um, Anna's running late. I just sent her a link. She couldn't find a link to the Zoom meeting. Um, it was on the agenda, but she just missed it. Jada's with us. Great. Um, <clears throat> we got my Garrett, Jada, Danielle. One, two, three. Jesse, four. My is five. Amon, six. We need two more members. I know well, there's Anna, yay, seven. We need one more. Um, I haven't heard from anybody. I know we have Dana, um, Tulani. I'm so sorry. What, you're, we're, we haven't started yet, Anna. You're right on time, perfect timing. Thank you for the link. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> next, uh, next time when I send out uh, uh, notifications through email, I'll make sure to include the link in the email. I didn't know I missed it that this time. Um, but if you ever get confused, Anna, it's within the agenda. There's a link you can just click on in an agenda. It's a little higher. Okay, okay, because I, I had that email and I, I just don't know what I did with the one with the link on it. You know, yeah. I, I'll just make sure to include it in the next uh, 
I'll include the link within the email as well. So it's a lot easier when I want to make, I want to make every, every, you know, things easier for everybody. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, let's see. We just need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We just need one more member to join. I'll reach out by email, right? I mean, by text right now to see if anybody else is coming. Good idea to bring some knitting. Guys, just in case you see me looking at different things, I gotta have something where I look at the, the, the agenda and the stuff too. So I have to cross reference. So it doesn't look like I'm like, you know, woohoo, but that's how I read and keep up. So bear with me. I just texted Tulani, Dana, and Pete. Nobody mentioned to me that they couldn't make it. Hopefully we'll see them in the next minute or two because if we don't have a quorum, we cannot meet, obviously. Um, so we'd have to wait. So maybe somebody just texted me back. I'll let anybody know. I'll let you guys know the updates. I think we should wait till, I guess, seven. 15 or 720, whatever people think to make sure we have a quorum. Any ideas? Oh, it's already, gosh, what time is it? 720 is what I would vote for. Yeah, okay. Okay. Does everybody agree? 720, and then we'll have okay. to reschedule till next Tuesday, hopefully. Um, Cause you know, the, for me, the biggest, for the biggest business right now is we need to discuss um, how we're changing the grant review procedures and then to talk about the biennial special meeting um, at the end, but we definitely need to have, you know, eight people to do these things. Anybody got some fun anecdotes to share? <laughs> I, I have a question. Well. Sure. Are people here writing for like that ARPA grant? Uh, I'm not, I can't, I work for the city. You also work for the city too, even though you're a volunteer. So you could help people write for the grant Jada, but it would be a conflict of interest if you ask the city for money. Me? And yes. Okay. And that right. goes for everybody else. That's a guards council member, which is a, it's unfortunate, but. Um, we do do the conflict of interest uh, test, yeah. and that is uh, definitely. But if you were part of a theater group, yes, se per se, and there was another applicant that you're working on a project with, they okay. could apply even though you're part of the group. You just can't rep your, represent any entity or yourself and ask the city for money. And then presumably you'd have to recuse yourself from voting on that particular. Yeah, well, that, that ARPA committee is a different committee, though. It's not part of the Arts Council. Mm -hmm. um, right. You, but the, what's funny is that, like, you can apply for an Arts Council grant, though, but you would have to recuse yourself from the Arts Council because the Arts Council grant is not public monies. It's it's arts lottery money. So uh, everybody who buys the scratch tickets and like the, you know, the mega millions or whatever, mm -hmm. the Massachusetts lottery system, mm -hmm. the money that we give out in the fall is from that. So it's not tax money getting redistributed. So it has different rules around it. Um, so if you wanted to apply to an LCC grant, 
you can, you just can't sit in and when the, your, they discuss your grant, you can't grade your grant, you can't score your grant. Well, um, there's some people with the housing, uh, with the War Three, uh, suggested that the uh, tenants associate, well, the form, they're trying to form a tenants association that they write with the grant. And I was like, all right, for offer funding. Absolutely. And so, you can help them, you can help them apply. You just can't represent, you can't be the applicant name on there. Okay. But you, if you're part of the Tenants Association, that's okay. It has to be another person. Okay, yeah. So, and again, you can be involved, you can help them. You just can't be, you can't represent yourself or an entity and ask the city in, in any like financial dealings with the city of Northampton. But the local cultural council is a different thing. It's a different entity. It's I know it's it's really confusing. That's just the way it is. Well, I um, wish they wouldn't even. Uh, I wouldn't. I didn't even know about it because I would like to not get involved in it. I'd like to just help other people what they're doing, not be a part of it. It's nerve wracking, and I don't understand enough. Yeah, there's a lot of applications coming, and I was looking at a couple really actually good applications that uh, from um, a community member. I've been just like helping to to do it and they, they came up with some really good ideas um so there's there's some mural projects they want to do on like strong avenue at progression and um there's this kind of podcast kind of decentralized podcast conference they want to do as well which seems like a really cool idea so those are two of the grants i got i read for somebody today who's working um with the vibrance committee for the chamber of commerce He's, he's a local artist. He's been around for a while. He's done a lot of different things. And, you know, the grants were good. The the um, the budgets were good. And I really didn't have any much, you know, uh, help to edit it because it seemed really good. Um, yeah, I got 714 right now. I haven't heard. Oh, hold on. Let's see. Dana can call in five minutes. And Pete said he's coming, but do you need a link? I'm right here. Oh, you're here. Oh, you're here. Good. I'm sorry. It's okay. I got, I, you know, we were just waiting to have, so we have eight. We're good. I'm going to share my screen right now, and I'm going to give some other people. Um, let me see. How do I do this again? Um, I got the chat. I'll share my screen for the, oh, where'd it go? So we can get underway. I'm sure everybody already has the agenda up there, but can everybody see the agenda? Mm -hmm. Great. Um, do you want to start us off, uh, Danielle? Our meeting via Zoom after Mayor Narkowitz's state of emergency declaration and Governor Baker's emergency order. Um, this meeting is being recorded. Welcome to Arts Council October meeting. Um, before we get into our agenda, um, I have two bits of public comment to read. Um, I think that these were submitted, well, I'll just read them. I'm not sure if they were intended for today's meeting or for the biennial special, uh, um, special meeting, but I'm gonna read them because they came in ahead of this meeting. So. Sorry, I have them up and okay. So uh, this is an email from Ellen Algarten. Dear Brian and Danielle, please read the following when NAC board meets to discuss the biennial. I, I again think this is for the special meeting, but it came in ahead of this one. So I'm just gonna read it um, out loud here. It's um, just, it's. If it if the biennial is not going to be discussed today, I mean that's that's up to you guys. I would probably want it, want it to be read 
at the biennial meeting. So I um, hate to put in my two cents. I know I'm not I'm supposed to be silent, but wherever it would have the most impact, I think. Well, why don't you read it so that we can think about it before the meeting? I, yeah, I, I, I agree with Anna. I think like having uh, new members that weren't part of the the thing of, or if you're not uncomfortable with that, that's fine. We can read it or not, Ellen. No, um, okay. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. Do you want me to read it? I'm fine to read it also. Yeah, public comment. What do you think, Danielle? That's fine. Yeah, that's what I find. Pass it over to you, Ellen. Um, I have to get it. No rush. We have a, a light agenda today. I also have another public comment. So Ellen, if you want to take a minute, I can yeah, read. Yeah, that's, that's good. Okay. okay, we'll come back to you in like a minute or two. Okay, great, I'll mute myself. Um, so if anyone else wants to <laughs> speak for public comment, feel free to raise your Zoom hand. Um, and I'm gonna read one that came in by email um, and then we'll call on folks in order with their hands go up but Ellen will be next. Okay, so this is an email from Stephen Petagorski that came in on Wednesday, October 5th. Danielle, Brian, I would respectfully ask that the letter below be read into the minutes at the start of the next Arts Council meeting. After watching the recording of the last Arts Council meeting, I was struck by the description given by Jesse Hassinger of the meeting last fall at which the biennial exhibi exhibit was canceled. In my opinion, the characterization characterization was incomplete, inaccurate, and one-sided. While newer council members are not responsible for the cancellation, it will be important for those who were not present a year ago to be informed about what happened before, during, and after the decision to cancel the biennial, if they will be voting on motions the Arts Council may consider regarding an apology for what transpired and or some sort of public forum to address the issues raised by the cancellation. Uh, pause. Ryan, can you add captions? I'm realizing this might be hard to process being read aloud. Sorry about that. Um, no, it's okay. Yes. And I can I can start it again. I'm just realizing it's like a really long sentence, and it might be hard to process by I'm ear. On it. Sorry about Thanks. that. I I'm gonna I'm gonna that. start it again, everyone. I don't know how folks. I'm like having a hard time processing, and I'm reading aloud, so I'm gonna go a little bit slower, and we'll have the captions up so that folks can Let read along. Just can you share I'm, screen? Can you share it on the screen so we can? Silently read it with you. Um, uh, if you yeah, make me, my uh, share. you okay, can, show if captions. you make me co-host, Brian, I can. You, you're co-host already, I thought. No, uh, never nope. mind. I probably forgot to do it. Here you go. Okay, I got closed captioning on. <laughs> Great. Sorry, and everyone. We just co-host. Co yeah. I want to make sure we're accessible here. It's it's a lot to process. Um, All right. Take it away. Okay. So I will share my screen. Maybe I'll share my screen. I'm sorry, how long have we been on Zoom? <laughs> mm, okay. Okay. So I received this letter too, an email directly. Great. So you can look at it on your own, or you can follow along here. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna start again. So from Stephen Petagorski, Danielle Bryan, I would respectfully ask that the letter below be read into the minutes at the start of the next Arts Council meeting. After watching the recording of the last Arts Council meeting, I was struck by the description given by Jesse Hassinger of the meeting last fall at which the biennial exhibit was canceled. In my opinion, the characterization was incomplete, inaccurate, and one-sided. While newer council members are not responsible for the cancellation, it will be important for those who were not present a year ago to be informed about what happened before, during, and after the decision to cancel the biennial, if they will be voting on motions the Arts Council may consider regarding an apology for what transpired and or some sort of public forum to address the issues raised by the cancellation. Anyone wishing to become more fully informed should first watch the recording of the virtual reception for a show in which Doris Madsen talks about her artwork since the Arts Council acted to censor her work without giving her a chance to respond to the venomous rant that preceded the vote to cancel the biennial. 
That should be followed by watching the recording of the Arts Council meeting at which Jesse Hassinger moved to cancel the biennial. That motion and vote co constituted a violation of open meeting laws and the meeting featured extensive and unchallenged trampling of the council's meet own meeting norms. It would also be useful for members to read some of the guest columns published in the Daily Hampshire Gazette around the time of the cancellation, as well as letters written to the Arts Council regarding censorship. There is much to consider regarding these issues. I believe it is essential for new members to be informed by something other than self-serving expressions from those who proposed and supported the cancellation. Sincerely, Stephen Pedigorski. Um, Ellen, do you wanna? Yep. Come on, <laughs> sorry. Okay. Um, this was an original guest column in um, in the Gazette on November 9th last year, a year ago. Um, I had been an active member of the Northampton Arts Council for 15 years, including two years as chair. When I joined the board in 2006, NAC was producing numerous musical events, but nothing dedicated to artists who exhibit in gallery settings. A group of board members at the time created the biennial in cooperation with the art department at Forbes Library. It is free to submit work to the biennial and is open to artists and poets currently residing in the four Western Mass counties, Franklin, Hamden, Hampshire, and Berkshire. This year would have been our eighth biennial and the fourth to include poetry. Approximately 40 visual artists and 15 poets have had their work presented each year. I need to respond to the statements and accusations accusations that had been directed at the Biennial Committee in order to provide greater transparency of how the event is planned. Most importantly, I first heard at the in, what I consider the infamous September 28th meeting when Biennial 2021 was canceled that several board members thought there were flaws in our process. In all our months of planning, no one from the board, including members of the Equity Committee, nor the director questioned biennial committee members about our process or raised any concerns. A member of the Equity Committee, Kent Alexander, now deceased, was present at the biennial subcommittee meetings, initially there only for the poetry part, but became actively involved in our efforts to find a diverse group of jurors, all of which was shared with the board at the March and May meetings. We chose to not have a specific theme this year, last year. We simply requested work completed between January 2020 through June 2021 for both poetry and visual art and hope to attract, attract a broad range of work from the artist's experience during that period. At our March board meeting, we discussed whether to continue to have a blind process the biennial was to have been discussed at the February meeting, but was sidelined when a member of the board brought up a new business item regarding the possibility that NAC would publicly support Northampton Abolish Now, which they eventually did. The discussion took up our entire meeting to the point that our regular business was put off until the following month. And nobody on the board got, you know, moved on with, the, with their regular business agenda. I'm including the following few excerpt lines from our March minutes, which clearly shows that all board members, including our chair, were involved in making decisions about our process. Well, we could ask applicants to self-disclose or ask for artist statements as to how lived experience informs your artistic practice. Our chair's, our chair's suggestion is share the NAC equity statement followed by Please share how your lived experience informs your artistic practice. Because there may be up to 120 applicants for jurors to review, we need to be specific and ask that this should only be a paragraph. Thus, we will modify the application process to include, along with the artist statement, a request, request a paragraph that will document, please share how your lived experience informs your artistic practice. Plans are for the submissions to continue to be blinded. Following this, we finalized our call for submissions and sent it on to NAC Director Brian Foote to be posted at various sites, including the Arts Council Facebook page, which is our usual process. We sadly lost an active member of our committee who was to be the facilitator during the jurying process when she resigned because of a new full-time teaching position. A past Smith College intern with the council who is state connected agreed to facilitate. 
She was not able to attend our final committee meetings for direction, but our director planned to meet with her at the office and have her get to know her responsibilities. Um, here are the statistics for the artist and poets selected for inclusion in the exhibit. For poetry, 90 poets submitted, 15 were chosen and five self-identified as from a marginalized group. For visual art, 129 artists submitted, 44 were chosen and nine self-identified as from a marginalized group. When the September 28th meeting opened, I understood the discussion would be about the question of censorship and outreach to marginalized communities, but it quickly devolved into a critique of the whole biennial process. Our guests spoke movingly about their lived experience and were welcomed. It upset me deeply that I failed to make a strong argument in support of continuing as planned or striking a compromise. It was difficult to speak openly and candidly. I now know I should have come more prepared with the supporting information listed above. I did not anticipate the radical move that was coming. The meeting spun out of control and like the decision the board made in publicly supporting Nan, a decision affecting 60 artists and trashing a year of work the committee had done was made in haste and without adequate deliberation. It is the internal workings of Northampton Arts Council, which I feel have been deeply flawed. I feel the Arts Council is currently in a redefining shift and is experiencing an identity crisis. Important issues have been raised, but the council has abandoned its main focus on art. I'm extremely concerned about the future direction of NAC under the current board. Um, and then there's a list of all the poets and um, artists, visual artists, which I will not read right now. Um, and then I wrote a little kind of addendum to that on um, September 27th, uh, a couple of weeks ago. A year has passed since the biennial debacle, and I'd like to raise a question about outreach for the council to consider, which has stayed with me all year. But first, a little background. I'm a photographer and look for exhibition opportunities from time to time. I receive email updates from sites where I am registered, where I can submit work for consideration. I assume it's my responsibility to explore these opportunities. I do not expect any agency or individual to hand feed me opportunities, though a friend will occasionally forward an email to me. The Biennial Committee was criticized by Jason Montgomery for not reaching out to the Native American population. It actually was not the work of the committee, but the responsibility of the next staff to post the 2021 Biennial Submission Opportunity. But even so, Whose responsible is it to find submission opportunities? This is the question I'd like the board to consider. And I specifically asked members of the board who are artists, how they receive knowledge of potential exhibits they can submit for. In an ironic twist, in 2019, Jason Montgomery sent in a submission for our spring grant round. I liked his grant and we, I did not know him by the way. And when we put out the call for the 2019 biennial, I personally sent him among others, the following email invitation, which he thanked me for and then submitted his poetry. Hi, Jason, after reading through your grant proposal, in parentheses, I'm a Northampton Arts Council board member. I think you should take a look at our biennial coming up if you haven't seen it yet. Please share the links below with the poetry community, especially Nicole. Thanks, Ellen Algarten. Jason's work was accepted for the 2019 biennial. In parentheses, he was not accepted for the 2021 biennial. I was not accepted for the 2021 biennial either. I was allowed to submit because it was a blind process. One more note in response to the read through of the meeting norms at the September meeting. Many of those norms were broken the night of the biennial cancellation. And additional items for the board to consider. Apologies to the artists and poets, Faith Kaufman and Forbes Library, and our retired poet laureate, Karen Schofield. Many of the artists in preparing their pieces for exhibition spend a good deal of money. Should the artists be reimbursed? Respectfully submitted. Thanks, Ellen. Um, does anyone else? Have anything to say for public comment? Okay, great. So um, just as a reminder, it's public comment. So we don't really, we don't respond to those uh, remarks at this time, but we will, when we have our special 
meeting for the biennial or when we come up to um, that section in our agenda tonight, if folks have questions on the board, um, we, can, we can discuss them. But on to our um, agenda. So, Brian, would you share the agenda back on the screen for folks? Thank you. So um, as a reminder, our group meeting norms, I will put in the chat. Folks, folks might remember them, but I'm just gonna I'll put those in the chat in a second. Um, and then on to Poet Laureate and Youth Poet Laureate. I believe that's Garrett, Jesse, and Brian. If, I don't know if anyone has an update or has anything to share on that. Um, I can update on the Poet Laureate. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> uh, we are um, at a good meeting with uh, Brian to um, bring me up to date on, you know, the details of uh, what the uh, timeline and everything looks like for usual, uh, you know, previously quote unquote usual um selection committee um process and uh based on that i'm getting together um some people to be part of the selection committee i've reached out to um the uh uh holio care center um they have a poetry class uh that i have worked with um, through the Odyssey Bookshop, and um, they have expressed some uh, genuine interest in being a part of the selection committee in one way or another. Um, and we're waiting to hear back uh, about Karen's um, schedule and her involvement. And if we are unable to schedule something where Karen's able to be involved, we will move along to other previous poet laureates to uh, fill the place of um, the poet laureate on the selection committee. Um, that is about where we're at. Thank you. Does um, Brian know he's sharing his screen right now? I wonder. Uh, I did text him. Brian, you're sharing your email screen. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, thank you, Jesse, for the update. Um, I did just share the meeting norms in the chat. Is there anything that you wanted to like raise with the group or troubleshoot or brainstorm the group on that? Uh, I think it's still early. Um, uh, early yet to really kind of bring anything in quite at the moment, but um, uh, I mean, I guess a, an additional word about the Holyoke Care Center. Um, it's made up of uh, young mothers, um, many of whom are single from uh, uh, economic, um, you know, with economic issues um, and to be able to, a couple of them have showed real interest in being able to be a part of a selection committee for a poet laureate. So I think that that's um, one of the reasons why I really wanted to reach out to them to get a uh, younger um, younger voices involved as well as a wider uh, range of economic and uh, racial makeup um, than, um, yeah, so that's that's where kind of I'm at. And if anybody has any other recommendations or if anyone is interested in being part of the subcommittee, um, we are open arms and welcome. Um, time frame wise is still kind of up in the air, as I said, because we're waiting to hear back from Karen about uh, her schedule availability. But I would imagine that we would be making some decisions most likely over winter break, um, or at least beginning major uh, discussions over winter break about how we're going to move forward.
Great, thank you. Um, next up on our agenda is the Youth Poet Laureate. And I think that that was uh, Garrett Bryan. I'm not sure if that needs to be tabled for next week or if you all have any um, updates. Um, we don't have a lot to add uh, other than to say that we haven't really gotten very far. Um, uh, I think Karen is not available to help with the youth, the youth poet, poet laureate portion uh, this year. So um, I, I was planning on meeting with Brian and then I had to sort of break our meeting, but um, to just gain some perspective on how the process normally works, um, just so I can approach it from that perspective. Um, and I'm interested to see who in the community I can sort of bring into the selection uh, committee process. And, um, and yeah, it's still very much in its infancy. But Brian and I are planning on meeting about it uh, as sort of like a sidebar to chat about the way the process normally works and um, how that schedule works. And uh, and yeah, we'll we'll uh, update you soon. Thanks. Have you have you two considered also reaching out to our previous youth poet laureate? Because I wonder if they might actually be able to provide some insight on how the process worked from like a youth applicant perspective um and maybe could be a really good ambassador for the program um if they're if they're open to it and available that's a great idea um it's tough it's tough because karen's unavailable for the fall i just reached out to her about january possibly she was the architect of the youth poet laureate uh as well as um kent was also a big champion and um, we'll have to pick up the pieces from there. I'm seeing if Karen's available in January for to help us with both. Uh, reaching out to the former youth polar, it's a great idea, Danielle. I'm also thinking about reaching out to a former um, arts council member to help with both, who was a champion of literature. Um, her name is Jenny Seckler. I'm gonna see what her availability is in the, in the coming months. Um, but this is something that I'm making a priority going forward with Garrett and Jesse to make sure that we um, construct a great poet laureate committee and a great youth poet laureate committee. Um, and when Garrett and I find time, we'll definitely make sure to meet and come up with a, a good plan and a nice list of names for subcommittee members. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Awesome, thank you. Um, does anyone have any questions about that before we move on to the grant process? Okay. Um, so grant process, I'm wondering if Amen might share our updated grant process. We confirmed our proposal, um, today thank you to everyone who sent feedback um we did a run through and i think we have a pretty good um process you mean just sort of run through the schedule that we talked about and the process okay so the schedule and then also um like everything that we decided on how it would work because we, we troubleshooted some of the the questions that came up last time. Sure. All right. So yeah, uh, yeah, you shared it in the chat. So what we talked about uh, for the, as far as the schedule uh, is we just like outlined some dates. Uh, hold on one second. Yeah, Brian, if you wouldn't mind sharing that grant stock, that'd be helpful. Yeah. Okay, so yes, so can everybody see that? All right. Uh, so we uh, came up with this timeline to make sure that uh, it moves along, um, but also uh, brings a little bit of order and we meet the deadline for uh, letting everybody know. And so as you can see, uh, we have the 19th and 20th for applications. And then Friday, the 4th of November is when we would have our preliminary scores due. And that is when we're asking everybody to have gone through and done their preliminary review of all of the applicants <clears throat> that we receive. And then you'll score them. And at the same time you're submitting your scores, you'll have picked your, uh, what we're calling your, the ones you might want to champion. So if there's one in there that you feel really strongly about, you'll be able to indicate 
uh, yes, I, you know, this is a, one I would like to champion. And what that does is if after the preliminary scores are assembled, if the one you are interested in championing falls below the threshold, it will get bumped into the next round and you can talk about why uh, you really believe in that project as part of the next uh, review round. And that will be included in the uh, batch that you are uh, responsible for doing the more review and asking the applicant any questions and then presenting to the council. And then <clears throat> uh, once we're moving into the top 50 uh, from the preliminary, we have these days below where uh, we'll, the next round will be either if we can do it all in one on one date, that'd be the uh, November 15th. Um, or if we have to do it via Zoom, we're looking at breaking it into two days to make it manageable for everybody um, and less kind of crazy long slog on Zoom for three or four hours. So we have the dates of the 15th to 16th or bumping until after Thanksgiving on the 29th and 30th. And then <clears throat> after those uh, presentations, we will uh, you know, submit our final scores. And then on the 13th of December is what we have cur uh, currently booked for the allocations meeting where we'll do the ranking and the uh, official awarding of grants. Any questions? One other clarifying point is after we have those top 50% applicants plus the champions, those will be the only applications that get presented. And Brian will share the, the sort of uh, the verdict or the outcome of the preliminary voting with us on Tuesday, um, November 8th. And at that meeting, we'll share who is presenting which grants and that person is going to be responsible solely for interacting with the artists. So we're not going to have a process by which like everyone on the committee comes up with questions and reaches out to an artist or everyone on the committee comes up with questions and reaches out to the presenter. It is going to be the presenter's sole responsibility to come up with a really solid pre uh, presentation that um, reflects the best parts of the application. Jesse? Um. <clears throat> the dates for when we're actually going to be meeting, regardless of in-person or Zoom, is that something that we could possibly expand into more of a doodle poll? Um, I'm just looking at, you know, not being available for many of those times. So the, the reason these are, the, are some of the dates that we came up with is because the deadline to post the grants is um, December 15th. And we tried to come up with back-to-back -back days that were in or around the Tuesday meeting. Um, I think we can find some other times, but I think it'd be great if we can kind of make, make that plan tonight or at least commit to one of those dates tonight, um, if that's possible for folks. Brian, what do you think? What was your response, Danielle? I, can you say that again? So um, Jesse asked if there were any other dates that we could offer for grant review and if we could do a, a doodle to figure that out. And I just named that like we kind of went through a pretty extensive um, review of possible dates uh, to come up with these. And I was wondering if you had any suggestions or advice whether we should do a doodle or at least try to confirm one review date tonight and then find a second for Zoom, maybe by doodle. And to clarify, I'm fine with the, with November 8th. Like that I already have set as, you know, uh, Arts Council meeting. It's the it's the dates after that that I'm I'm looking at conflicts on my calendar. Okay, so those um, are the presentation dates which are important. So, um, 
or what about so even the Wednesdays too? So those are like that's a Tuesday, Wednesday, a Tuesday, Wednesday. Both of those are the Wednesdays are also a conflict for you, Jesse. The 30th is perfectly fine for me. Um, unfortunately, the 16th, like that week, the, the week of the 14th, I'm out of town. Okay. And what about Mondays for everybody? Monday nights. What 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 are the dates? Didn't we, our last meeting, we go through this whole thing, deciding, and we decided Tuesday. So those are yeah, that's regular for regular meetings, meetings, Pete. That's for regular I mean, meetings. These are specifically for grant evaluation. We do this twice a year. But, you know, I, I, I I'm feel like- I'm still setting Tuesdays aside for, for this meeting. Yeah, it's the second Tuesday for this meeting every month. That's what we ask for everybody. I understand. Exactly. Pete. I'm saying I'm setting Tuesdays aside for us. So every Tuesday you set aside for us? I am available on Tuesdays. I have an okay. open spot except for this. Okay. So, you know, Eamon, Danielle, what do you what do you think we should do? We can do back-to-back -back Tuesdays and meet during Thanksgiving week. So we could do 1114 and um 11 or 11 uh, 15 and 11 22 those would be consecutive tuesdays those are not the second tuesday of the month so i don't know if folks have other obligations on the third and fourth tuesday of the month um we could do a doodle but uh we are going to need to either set aside like one three hour in-person meeting if that is allowed or um to zoom times so just because there's we don't have a complete consensus on the the thing i think we should send out a doodle and like whatever two dates out of those four dates we have there um have the most attendance we should pick and that's yeah I don't I don't know if that is a, 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 a strategy that everybody agrees with. Um, it's you know we are put under uh, a timeline by the state. I'd like to stay within the timeline and not uh, duplicate what happened in this past year, which was brought me undue stress and a lot of complications with the state. So, so I will always be working I, I'm, I'm in Connecticut yeah uh, Sunday through Thursday um, zoom will always work and if people want it, like I don't hate the in in like in person thing um, if somebody wants to just open the like open a zoom meeting so that if it's just me then I think that's perfectly fine I I I don't know how people are feeling, but if I had the choice, I would go in person and just get a hit it and quit it in one day. I'm just throwing that out there for people as a choice, as as a personal opinion. If if I had the opportunity, uh, but if that, I'm that sorry, is also on people's I, I didn't hear all that. Are you saying that you prefer to have it in person, or is there a hybrid option? I'm asking for a hybrid option because I will always there, be there. There is a hybrid option. I'm going to discuss it with the mayor's office tomorrow. Okay. Um, the only thing I'd like to say uh, about this, I, I think I mentioned that I had a conflict, but I'm, I'm uh, on Tuesdays at seven, but I'm doing my best to, if it's voted here, of course, my commitment is here and I'm making changes for the other meeting. My only thing is that I know we're, when we're doing all this stuff, I, if I, if you see a, a anxiety face of mine, that's my new look these days, but I was just thinking you know, with the voting, uh, you know, major election going on the 8th, I think that um, I'll do my best to do early voting on a Saturday on the 22nd when it starts. But those are things that I think that when we designed the schedule, you know, we thought about those kind of things. So, and also just to say that, I'll, be, you know, I won't be in town, but I'll be at the meeting on the 15th. I'll be away, but I'll be able to do the meeting, but I'm, um, I'm, I'm available and um, these are important. Thanks, Jada. So it looks like we still need to find a date for either an in-person 
meeting, one in-person meeting or one hybrid meeting with an in-person option um, or two online meetings between Tuesday, November 8th, which is when we'll have the preliminary scores due that gives people two weeks, which is you know an okay amount of time, but we don't wanna push it too much further um, back because we have this tight deadline. Um, but we, we are looking for two additional meeting times between Tuesday the 8th and Wednesday the 14th um, to review grants and then actually a third meeting for allocation. So the reason we set the allocation meeting for 1213 is because that is our December meeting. It wouldn't be scheduling, scheduling anything outside of our regular meeting time. Um, so we take over that meeting for part partially for allocation. And then it's two additional meetings between our November meeting on the 8th and our December meeting on the 13th. So that was the rationale. Um, I, I don't care when it happens, um, but we need to find two dates or one date. And I think someone suggested a doodle poll. So shall we just do that with all the dates that are in the mix? Sure, if Brian is up for administering another poll. Absolutely. Great. Um, yeah, I think a poll really is, I think, I'm sorry, I was just gonna say, um, you know, I, was, I, I agree, like, to me that my first choice, I agree with Tulani, like, the one and done day, if, you know, like one day in person or hybrid, and like, just truck through them all. Uh, but as far as the poll goes, um, you know, we are, it is, we are under a bit of like a, a time frame, you know, that's kind of like laid out for us by the state. Um, and you know, I think, you know, the the back to backs are to me like the, the easiest options to sort of navigate. I understand that might not work for everybody at every single instance, but um, you know, this might be a time where, you know, uh, if somebody can't make one set, uh, maybe they are just automatically scheduled to be at the next set. Um, and we just have to accept that maybe not everybody can be at every single one of these, but we, are under a tight time frame and needs to get done in a certain amount of time. And to that point, hopefully this process actually, everyone's preliminary scores are gonna have much more import. So obviously voting on the, the presentations is gonna be you know essential for our process, but everyone's preliminary score, which is done independently, is going to shape what our top 50 are. Um, so ideally everyone would be at both meetings um, and we're gonna try to make that happen with our doodle poll, um, but if it can't happen, it can't happen. Oh, right, everyone is gonna be presenting grants. So if, it, if you can't be at both, then you need to be at the one where you're gonna be presenting, right? Is that what that is kind of yeah. indicating? Does anyone have any questions about the process? This all makes sense, it's super clear. I think you did a fine job of, of encapsulating um, the whole to be more workable than it was the last time. Yeah, thank um, you so much for updating that. And thank you, Eamon, for the timeline. That was really helpful too. So to, we, to change the review process, we definitely need a vote, Danielle. Would anyone like to motion to update our review process as proposed today? I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Oh. Okay, so all in favor of adopting our new grant review process, please raise your hand. Aye. Aye from Jesse, Dana, Anna, Eamon, Jada, Tulani. Um, me, Pete, or did you vote for this? Pete is raised hand. So yeah, all voted in. Great, thanks everyone. Um, <clears throat> uh, I just had a question about the um, the championing process. Mm -hmm. um, so in order to champion, uh, an, an application does that imply that it's in the bottom 50 no, no. so 
So you Everyone can champion. Oh, okay, sorry, go ahead. The championing happens during your preliminary review. So before presentations happen, before you know who's in the top 50%, you're gonna choose two. We settled on two because we might have a lot of applications. So the whole point is to narrow this process down. Um, two applications to champion. And many of those might be in the top 50 anyway, based on scores. Mm. Um, but if they're not, then they will automatically moved into the you know top 50%, which wouldn't actually be 50%, but into the, the ones that are reviewed along with the top 50%. Okay. So you'll do your championing on a new score sheet that um, Brian is, is designing. And that score sheet will have the name of every applicant, possibly also their project name, possibly also their MCC ID. We're gonna to try to make it as, as simple as possible. And then you'll have three categories, which are our review categories, which you can add your scores in, preliminary scores. And then there's gonna be a box at the end that says, do you want to champion this applicant? Yes or no? Do you wanna um, abstain due to conflict of interest? Yes or no? And you can fill that in twice for champion. Okay, cool. Um, are, are these like, is that form gonna be available to us before the process starts or is it just, We'll just sort of get it and figure it out on the day. That because that's that's fine with me. I'm the saying. form the form will go out to you on Wednesday, October 19th or Thursday, October 20th, which is when you will also have app access to the applications for review. And you'll have access to the applications for review through the MCC portal. And you can also like download it as a PDF. Um, and also between now and 1019, um, Brian is going to try to organize like a drop-in training session, or I guess we could do it even between now and 11-4, um, which is when the preliminary scores are due, um, just to help people figure out how to use the spreadsheet, how to use the um, MCC interface in case it's not um, as intuitive as the state thinks it is. <laughs> And we'll probably um, determine, you know, a couple of dates just for drop in either in person or on zoom. I'm, I'm happy to help as well. So if folks have questions as they're going through this process, feel free to reach out to um, to any of us. We haven't set the dates of a training yet. We were gonna aim for one like weekday morning and then one evening so that we can accommodate folks with different schedules. And if those, if like we set a time and it doesn't work and you just wanna set up a one-on-one -on -one time for 15 minutes to go over the process, we could always set that up. Our goal is for this to be easy for folks and hopefully this process will be a little bit easier now. Okay, so can we move on from grants? Great. Um, up next is discussing our biennial special meeting. We were not able to schedule a time um, from the last doodle poll that had any kind of consensus. So Brian, do you wanna share our next steps? So I'm gonna have to send another doodle poll out. Uh, my intention is to have all of the regional members that were at the um, biennial meeting that we had last year, as well as a quorum. Um, and we did not get that with the dates I sent out. Um, so I think we have to look going forward to try to fit everything in. And we might have to forego like regular business meetings in the next two months to get the grant review allocation and the biennial special meeting out. So. I'm gonna look at the dates again and uh, 
send out a new set of dates and then we might have to meet on a weekend or something like that uh, another day to get all these meetings in. So I'll do my best to get um, the uh, members that were attended the first biennial cancellation meeting to, so we can have everybody on the, the biennial special meeting to discuss uh, our next steps forward. So that's the update I have now. Unfortunately, we weren't able to schedule something. I have a question. Why is it believed that we need two meetings? For uh, the grant review or for the biennial? For the biennial. I, there, so, we just need, we need one meeting. Oh, okay. I and then, that. so, but the problem is, Anna, is that, you know, I think it's in our best interest if we have all of the arts council members that attended the- I agree, I, I yes. think it's a great idea. And then we also need to have eight members to have a quorum so we can have open, we can have uh, a quorum at the meeting. So those I sent out, I think, I sent one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I, seven dates out and we did not get those two. Um, uh, from the doodle pull I, pulls I sent out, I didn't get those two um, conditions fulfilled for a biennial special meeting. Um, uh, so I think we should schedule, I'm just gonna look at some more dates and send them out and see if we get something that everybody does, you know, can do. And then once we get something scheduled that Danielle, Jesse, Tulani, Eamon, and Dana, as well as two other or three other members can attend, then we can have a biennial, biennial special meeting and then we can craft the response um, and have an open discussion with the community about it to focus all on that. Um, maybe we can take our next meeting. What about cutting the next meeting uh, to discuss the grant review on would that be November? And then turning that into the biennial special meeting, like half and half, like, you know, the grant review discussion will be small and then we can take, take the rest of that. How does everybody feel about that? Which would be, we'd be looking at November 8th, 8th. I do, I do think that Jada's point about election day is oh, a is good that one. is that November eighth election day? I mean, I one it like might be a barrier for people to come, but like more importantly, I True. think that like it's going to be a very stressful day. And I, yeah. I mean, if that's the only time that works for us, we'll do it. But to me, that sounds like a little bit of a. a good if point, we can have to put ourselves through that, maybe we can not. Okay. Because even though I'm going to vote early, I'm always there on vote day reminding people to vote. So I'm usually just frazzled, but uh, we can do it, people, guys. But how do people feel up. like on a, I know, Pete, that you dedicated your Tuesdays? I hear you. It's 100 percent. I understand. Does anybody would consider a Sunday for the biennial special meeting a Sunday night? Is that a bad idea? I'm just trying to, like, get a lot to go in there. Jesse I like the idea of a Sunday. Sunday night. Yeah. Yeah, that way I pray all the time anyway. So that would be good for the meeting. <laughs> so you have the power of the Lord with you, Jada, on that day. And Amen. we could just be a little earlier, like a six, like a mat, it's like closer, like a six to eight on a Sunday. How does that sound? I send some Sundays out and then we'll see if we can get that. I got a lot of thumbs up here. Okay. So that'll be my Zoom architecture for next time. What about uh, anybody else from the community? Derek, Doris, well, how do you feel about Sunday? Okay. Um, yeah, so um, I'm going to work on the dates that we talked about. What do, oh, hey, Doris, what do you think about Sunday? Uh, Sunday's uh, okay, but, you know, I, I don't plan on participating. I mean, that's your... Well, I don't, I'm just asking you because you're not a council member. You're a community member. Do you think that yeah. would be... Like just because you're you're not you're not a council member. Uh, right? Yeah, after November third. Okay, I, so I'm yeah. well, I'm gonna see who's available, but a Sunday would be okay to have a public meeting. You think? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Cool. Thanks, Doris. Um, 
So I'm going to focus on Sundays for the biennial special meeting. And then we've already have the dates that we've discussed for the grant review meeting. I'll send a doodle out for that. And then, you know, my conditions for the biennial meeting. And then I'm going to go with, you know, quorum plus for the other grant reviews. Um, I'm going to have a discussion with the mayor tomorrow about um, in-person and, uh, and hybrid meetings. I believe the city hall hearing room has the capability for hybrid meetings. I've been told this. Yeah. I know there's somebody who can teach me how to do it, which is good. Um, if anybody is does not want to meet in person, um, but I can tell you that grant review goes much more uh, uh, quickly and smoothly when we meet in person. Uh, it's a lot easier. But if you're not comfortable due to flu season, COVID season, all those things, I'm more than happy to get training and get a hybrid model. And I hear, hear it works pretty good. Um, so that's, I know going forward, Brian feeds us when, yeah, exactly. I do. When you meet in person, the city hall hearing room, I buy a big, nice meal and everybody gets to eat and, you know, so, and it would be, you know, it can go from pizza to sushi to whatever. I can get a charcuterie plate, whatever you guys want. Oh yeah. <laughs> We require dessert. Yes, I will definitely bring dessert. I make pie. I don't make cupcakes, Eamon. Um, it's apple season. I'll definitely make, you know, apple pie or something. Um, require dessert. Um, so that's what we got for that. Yes to pie. Great. <laughs> I make Brian. a really good crust. So Brian. Yes, sir. Um, I just want to remind you that um, Tulani can only do a hybrid model Tuesday yeah. through Thursday. So in terms of you getting training, I think that sounds like it will be a necessary thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to definitely um, discuss it with the mayor's office tomorrow. I'm going to see what the city council is doing because they're still doing, I think they're still doing only Zoom, but I'm going to get an update. Um, I do have the contact to get hybrid. But does anybody else have any like, other conflicts for in-person regarding like health concerns that's on the meeting right now everybody's on the meeting right now which is great go arts council okay nobody has health concerns i'm going to discuss with the mayor for a hybrid option for their next arts council grant review meetings going forward um i'll be there i just did an additional booster and flu shot so i'm gonna yes I'll have like the special air filters to Jada and I'll have, we can open the windows. We'll try to make it as safe as possible. We can spread out. It's a fairly large room for 10 people. So I think we can make it, make it work. Um, I'll make sure I know how to use all the new tech in there. So we can have a nice big projector to see everything together. So um, I'm looking forward to it. Cause I think, you know, community is much better in person. Um, uh, what else is on the agenda today? I think that's, I think that's it for it. the agenda, but I did want to pose the question or like the invite to folks on the board. We we will be crafting an agenda for the special biennial meeting. And if you have suggestions for um, you know, how you'd like that meeting to take shape, please feel free to email them to me or Brian. And if, if you could do it within the next like week or so, just so that if if we're able to schedule the meeting soon we can have your feedback. We'll definitely have a public comment section that's gonna be really important. Um, but if you have any any questions about any of the content that was presented tonight or need any links to the previous meetings, like all of that stuff is available online. So I'd encourage you to take a look. And then maybe after that, if you have any, um, uh, oh, sorry, um, if you have any, um, suggestions for how we frame or structure our time for that particular meeting. Really, really welcome it. Could we have a new topic sign? Is that for the biennial meeting, Jesse? No, just just tonight. I just have something that I wanted to bring up um, for, I have a question and I just wanted to wait till the end. So we're not, you know, yeah. I didn't see that there was like a, a new, you know, new topics, like new business. Like that, new business yeah. Yeah. Sure. Any any final thoughts, comments, questions about the biennial special meeting? Uh, just to throw it out there, um, depending on what 
Sunday it is. Sundays are usually harder for me, but you know, since I'm like a one of the required you know, originals to be there, um, just throwing that out there. Um, but I will do my absolute 100% best to make a Sunday work, but just throwing that out there. So there's no like surprise, you know, later. <laughs> like if I said, I can't do it. Thank you. Okay. Um, new business. Um, uh, I was curious, it's been a while since um, I looked at what kind of like we had written and Danielle, what you had kind of begun in terms of like our equity statements and all of that. Um, do we have a land acknowledgement statement that we have all agreed on? We do not. I don't think we have a land acknowledgement statement. Can you educate me what a land acknowledgement statement is, Jesse? Uh, land acknowledgement statement is um, essentially stating that uh, any um, place that you are on um, physically uh, is giving attributes to the fact that it is, for the most part, unceded land of the original inhabitants of um, the location. Um, and it is essentially just bringing forward the fact that uh, while, especially I, I think, since we're talking about being in government here, it is vital for us to um, uh, at the very least, be able to uh, acknowledge that the land that the Northampton government sits on is unceded land of uh, the original peoples of uh, this area. Thank you. Thank you. So I shared a link in the chat that also explains what a land acknowledgement is. It it's exactly as Jesse said, but there's also a section in that article that talks about a virtual land acknowledgement. And sometimes when you have virtual meetings, it can be tricky because people are in different places, but there are guidelines to creating those as well. Um, we did discuss it many iterations of an equity subcommittee ago. And one of the points that came up um, at that time was some feedback that I had received from one of um, the a couple of uh, folks in the I Collective who had been doing partner programs with was that they didn't support um, participating in programming with land acknowledgements unless those land acknowledgements also were tied to organizations that gave reparations. So there was a little bit of, and that's you know one group of folks, and that was five, no, like three years ago, four years ago. So I think it's definitely like worth revisiting, and I think one of the the guidelines for how to create a land acknowledgement is actually to bring folks in who are of the you know rightful inhabitants of the land so i know there are some folks on this council that are, are indigenous but you know we would have to think about what that means and and who to involve in the process as well but thank you for raising it um i see a comment um, in the chat about inviting um, the indigenous artists who participated in the September 2021 meeting, 2021 meeting to the special uh, biennial meeting. I think uh, it's a public meeting. It's gonna be a special meeting. We're gonna announce it on the city website. I don't know if Brian, you have any plans to do like an email about it to folks who participated, just to let them know that this meeting is happening. Um, but if that's the case, all the folks who participated in that meeting, as well as you know, people that were involved, I think would be notified. Uh, 
the business meeting. Um, the if if we are determining if we're going to work towards a land acknowledgement, I think we'll have to bring lots of folks in, not only the folks who are on that call, but um, it would be great to have them and anyone else who wants to participate in that conversation. Yeah, Jada. Um, hi, um, I was trying to find it, but I just saw uh, something where this uh, woman who looks like me, but it's from the Martha Vineyards area, Native America. I had no idea. And I was trying to upload it to send to a couple of people, just that that was something that I found was very, very interesting. And uh, so I just don't know how to send it to it. And I don't even know if I can find it now, but I do want to send it to um, board members here because it was uh, eye-opening. It's a short little video, if that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. If you if you need some help, tech help, feel free to call or email or text, or you can send it to me or Brian and we can get it to everybody else. Okay, any other thoughts, questions, concerns? Yeah, Ryan? Uh, I think we have to get the contacts to the people who participated in the biennial, the, the native American community that came, the indigenous community that came to the biennial. So I can, sh I don't have the contacts, so I have to find out how to get in touch with them. Um, so I, I can get some help with that. I was going to talk, I was going to invite the, um, everybody who's in the subcommittees, uh, the poet and the visual arts. I was going to invite the um, jurors. I was going to invite Rose. Uh, and then um, the people, the other people who are participated in the biennial, the, the at the meeting the, when the biennial was canceled, um, as well as well as all the artists. So, bye, Anna. Great. So that's about it. We can wrap this meeting up. Um, Would anyone like to move to close the meeting? I'll make a move to close the meeting. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Great. Thank you, everyone. Meeting is adjourned, and we will see you soon. Good night.